In ihrer intimen Verschränkung von Kunst und Leben, Politik und Geschichte ist das fotografische Övre von Peter Hugo ein exorbitanter Beitrag zum Gesamtprogramm des Kunstmuseums Wolfsburg. Warum? Weil Museum wie Werk des Fotografens gleichermaßen Weltempfänger ganz besonderer Art sein wollen und, so denke ich, auch sind. Bei Peter Hugo ist es eigentlich egal, welches Thema Sie herausgreifen, ob Sie die Obdachlosen in Kalifornien nehmen, die Freaks von Außenseiter in China oder eben auch benachteiligte Weiße in Südafrika nach dem Ende der Apartheid. Immer geht es immer um Bruchlinien, um Umbrüche in der Gesellschaft. Er ist ganz, ganz nah dran an uns, an unserer Zeit. Schon August Sander, großes Vorbild von Peter Hugo, äh, wollte die Wahrheit sagen über seine Zeit und die Menschen. Und auch wenn Wahrheit heute ein großes Wort ist und natürlich mit sehr viel Brüchigkeiten und Pluralitäten belegt, so geht es Peter Hugo doch genau darum, um die Wahrheit des fotografischen Blicks, auch heute noch. So I would like to start with the very beginning. So can you describe your way into photography? Was there a special moment? How did you become a photographer? I had been taking photographs since I was a teenager. And after a few years after school, um, uh, I, after doing something else, I switched back to photography. I never studied it. Uh, I'm self-taught. Um, but I think what attracted me to photography when I was so young already was the fact that it gave me an opportunity to look at a, the society that I was from, which was South Africa, which even at that time and even at that young age was clearly a very fraught place and a very problematic place. Um, so it gave me an excuse really to, to look critically and engage with the world. And do you remember the first thing you really wanted to look at? You know, the first photograph I ever printed, let's put it that way, is still the same picture I'm taking today, which was a portrait of a person lying on the street. I think if one has to be incredibly reductive about my work, one could say that it's about outsiders in some way or another, or about the periphery of society, um, whether it's literal or a more allegorical Uh, uh, peripheral kind of uh, tangent. I think just growing up as a white South African had a really big influence on my work. Growing up during a period of political transition from apartheid to a democratic society had a lot of influence on me as a person and the way I look at the world. Um, having lived through some sort of revolution in a way. Uh, I think the Looking Aside series to me is really a good way to speak about my development as an artist because it started out photographing people with albinism in an identical style. Then it moved on to, so people quite literally that you felt uncomfortable looking at. And I think that's such a big part of photography is actually the fact that when you look at something and the emotion and the reaction it causes in you is often not what's actually in the picture, but it's what you as the viewer bring to the imagery, the baggage that you as a viewer bring. And why did you integrate a self-portrait of you into the <laughs> series? Is it about looking at yourself? I always try to include myself somehow in the, in, in the work. Um, I think good work in some ways always has to be about your, myself or about the artist, I think. That's the only frame of reference that I really have. Is this also about identification with the subject? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Another important series, which uh, is, ki is Kin. You worked eight years uh, on the Kin series, and it's located at the core of your own family. There are portraits uh, of family and friends. And on the other hand, you go with the camera through the whole South African society portraying people from all social layers. So where did this idea kind came from? Was it a necessary step for you to deal with the history of your own country? Yeah, very much so. I mean, the impetus for this series really started when 
my wife and I had our first child. And when you realize that you're taking responsibility for somebody else and not just yourself. And it forced me to take a long, hard look at what it means to be South African, my position in it, the history of my position in it, which is an entitled one, uh, and the complexities and nuances that go with that. So I set out in a way to resolve my relationship, which is a very ambivalent relationship with South Africa, through the process of photographing what I kin, which means, in a way, society that's close to you. Um, and at the end of the journey of doing it, I think I failed. I think I feel more confused than I did at the beginning of the, of the project. So where do the ideas come from? Are you searching for ideas or do they just come to you by, by coincidence? Uh, probably a combination of both. I think, um, I mean, I think pictures, good pictures and ideas are all around you. You don't have to travel to the outskirts of Nigeria to make good pictures. Um, but often my ideas are informed by imagery that I see in the media. The Ahina men I found through a photograph that someone sent from a news article to me. Nollywood came from movies that I watched in West Africa. Permanent Era came from a photograph that I saw in a National Geographic article on risk global recycling. So a lot of my, and I, since I come from a journalistic background, a lot of the work I do often has, comes in reaction to imagery that I see in the media. Now you ask about with it come, how it comes to me, I think that's Part of being an artist is cultivating the space to be able to respond to stimuli and to be able to take a position. I think in two, two events that my life have revolved around is, happened in 1994. One was the democratic elections in South Africa. It was also the age where I turned 18 and the genocide in Rwanda, which as a journalist and as an artist I engaged with many, many times over the last 20 odd years. And uh, somehow it's like, it's, it's like a sun that I keep orbiting around. And what about the exhibition title, Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea? I mean, it's an old saying, there are songs with this title, um, there even is a recent book with the title. So. It's your personal choice, you chose the title. What's the relation for you with the exhibition and the, or with your work? Well, I th to me, it's, uh, it speaks to me about the crisis that photography, is, the medium, is going through in a way. That it, it's, you know, photographs are big lies. All they really can show you are the surface of things. And you and I, who come from an art history background, realize this. But the majority of people who look at photography do not read it in this way. They read it as something that has to have some sort of veracity and has some sort of accountability towards truth, so-called truth, which you know, if you look, if you consider this carefully, is absolutely ridiculous. A photograph can't do this. It's a, um, so I think this medium is in a constant crisis, which means, I mean, obviously, between the devil and the deep blue sea.